Assalamu alaikum this is lecture number 10 from chapter homeostasis and in this lecture I will explain excretion in animals and men. The first example is of hydra. Hydra is a cilantrate and if you remember from your previous class, class we have studied that cilantrates have very simple body structure. They are diploblastic uh, which means they have only two layers ectoderm and endoderm. Right, and uh, the huge gastrointestinal cavity. They have a body cavity which is also called as cilantron. So water is present in the surrounding of the hydra and it enters through the mouth inside this body cavity. So that's why the ex external layer of cells and internal layer of cells are in direct contact with the uh, all the cells, all the cells present in the hydra. So the excretory product in hydra is ammonia and as I told you all the cells of hydra are in direct contact with the surrounding water. Ammonia can be removed by simple diffusion because water is present here and outside also. So that the cells are in direct contact so simply diffusion will remove the ammonia from the body into the water from, again from the external and internal surfaces. The next example is of uh, flatworm planaria. Planaria excretes urine. The excretory product of planaria is urine. Its excretory system uh, consists of tubular structure which have two longitudinal excretory canals or branching tubules and it lie on lateral side of the body along the entire length of the animal which means the whole body of the planaria have these canals running through uh, throughout the body and each tubule open outside by excretory pores right this branching tubules they open outside by excretory pores while inside they give rise to a blind bulb like cells which are called as flame cells or protonephridia. So we can say that the excretory organ of planaria is protonephridia. Flame cells or protonephridia are hollow and contain cilia which beats like a flickering flame that's why they are called as flame cells. The water with ammonia enters from the tissue fluid into the flame cells and the beating of the cilia pushes this solution into the excretory canal from where it is excreted out through the excretory pores. Here is the uh, diagram of planaria. You can see here this is the uh, longitudinal tubular structure which arises uh, from the head to the uh, end of the body and this is protonephridia here enlarged from this section. You can see a flame bulb here right here and an opening which opens outside the, um, organ, uh, the body of the organism. And inside this flame bulb is present cilia, right? This cilia uh, beat just like a flickering flame while the water uh, comes inside this cell and goes in, uh, uh, excrete out from the, this particular part. The next example is of earthworm, which is the example of segmented worms. The excretory product is urine or uh, the excretory fluid simply we can say that the excretory organ of the earthworm is metanephridia you have to remember and memorize the excretory organs and excretory products of all these animals the their structure is highly coiled tubule which forms the metanephridia and it opens at both ends It has a tubular structure, right? A long coiled tube which has two openings and it opens at the both ends. The internal opening is called as nephrostome while the external opening is called as nephridiopore. Remember that the excretory organ is metanephridia. The internal opening of this excretory organ is nephrostome and the external opening is nephridiopore. 
pore. The tubular structure also forms bladder before opening of the nephridio pore through the skin. Here this is the earthworm and this section of the earthworm where metanephridia is present, you, uh, it, it is enlarged here. Here you can see this is a, a coiled tubular structure. This is coiled and tubular tube-like structure which has an opening here, right here which is uh, called as the uh, internal opening. You can see here the internal opening and then an external opening right here in the skin, right? So the external opening here is called as nephridio pore, while the internal opening here or here is called as nephrostome. This is the bladder which is formed in this tubular structure while uh, before it opens outside the uh, body. So the um, excretory or urine or excretory fluid, it uh, flows in this tubular structure and right here uh, when it, it passes through this region or the collecting tube, the reabsorption occurs here and then the rest of the uh, excretory fluid is emptied into this bladder from where it is eliminated from the body through the external pore or nephridio pore. Now, excretion in cockroach. The excretory organ of cockroach are called as malphagian tubules. They arise from the junction of the midgut and hindgut. These are the parts of the elementary canal of cockroach. They are immersed in hemolymph. If you recall that uh, the arthropods or insects, they have uh, hemolymph instead of uh, hemoglobin. Why? Because their uh, blood is mixed in the lymph or the interstitial fluid of the body, right? They don't have proper uh, blood circulatory system. That's why their blood uh, is uh, distributed in the uh, lymphatic area as well. That's why their blood is also called as hemolymph. So the cells of malphagian tubules absorbs excretory waste and some useful substances which are present in hemolymph because this is the uh, fluid present in their body. From there, the malphagian tubules absorbs the excretory waste directly and useful substances as well. Then after the selective reabsorption of useful substances, the excretory product which is uric acid, it is discharged into the rectum, the part of the elementary canal. And in rectum, the uric acid is uh, stored for some time for the reabsorption of the salts and water. Now, the rest of the uric acid, which becomes almost dry, it passes out along with the feces from the body of cockroach. Now, the excretion in men. In men and other mammals, the excretory organs are generally consist of kidney, liver, and skin. Kidneys maintain osmoregulation and eliminate nitrogenous waste, excess salts and excess water from the body. Then liver. Liver excretes nitrogenous waste like bile pigments. Skin excretes salts and some other substances along with sweat during the perspiration. We will discuss uh, the important organs which are the part of excretory system of humans. Liver. We know that liver is very important organ in uh, digestion. Uh, it has very important role in digestion, but it also act as an homeo uh, act as a homeostatic organ. It is large reddish brown and glandular organ which is located in the abdomen just below your diaphragm. It is a metabolic center. That's why it is provided with rich supply of blood. Gallbladder is also present and it, it is attached with the liver for the storage of bile which is secreted by liver. Bile is poured into the duodenum by the common bile duct and rest of the products which are formed here are released into the blood via hepatic or through the hepatic vein. Now, role of the liver as homeostatic organ, in addition, as I told you, in addition to its role in digestion, liver also supports the vital activities of the kidney. How? 
the first function uh, which i am discussing here is metabolism of carbohydrates and lipids yes liver maintains the metabolism of carbohydrates and lipids how uh, liver basically maintains a concentration of glucose in our blood if the excess glucose uh, is present in our blood it is converted into glycogen and is stored for future use when there is a shortage of glucose in blood then glycogen is broken down into glucose and it is supplied to the blood uh, to the body for uh, the requirement of energy and if the stored glycogen is depleted from the normal level then amino acids may converted into glucose by liver it also removes lipids from the blood by oxidation or by modification and stores it as fat so these are very important functions which uh, liver is doing uh, for us as it maintains the metabolism of carbohydrates and lipids then it also takes part in deamination and urea formation which is excretory product of our body right here it is a cycle provided which is called as ornithine cycle or urea cycle what happens uh, we, our body cannot store a lot amount of protein right that's why it needs to eliminate from the body excess amount should be eliminated from the body how it works the amino acid and um, from the amino acid the amino group or the um, the amino group of the ammonia uh amino group of the amino acid together with the hydrogen atom is removed to form ammonia right here the ammonia is formed by removal of the this um, uh, group of amino acid and it enters into the ornithine cycle or urea cycle right and after several uh, reaction right here you can see after several reactions it uh, forms urea which is less toxic and it can be excreted through the kidney while the rest of the uh, group of um, um, amino acid it uh, add with the oxygen and forms uh, um, the uh, keto acid which takes part in respiration which is not uh, our concern here we will just uh, concentrate on the ornithine cycle or urea cycle then the production of bile liver also uh, plays role in production of bile bile is a yellowish green alkaline fluid which contains bile pigments which are bilirubin and bilirubin then salts which are normally sodium glycocholate sodium taurocholate cholesterol phospholipids and mucus bile pigments are excretory products of heme part of the broken hemoglobin of worn out rbcs we know that the rbcs are uh, continuously producing new cells and the older ones are broken down so when the older rbcs are broken down the heme part of the hemoglobin produces the bile pigments as excretory products right so the globin part is uh, from this hemoglobin the globin part is broken into amino acid which is recycled for new protein molecules bile salts are involved in emulsification of fats in small intestine the other functions along with the previous one are detoxification liver can modify the structure of many drugs and poisons to make them harmless liver it plays very important role as it can detoxify uh, the many drugs which are harmful and make them harmless hydrogen peroxide which is a by product of many ca chemical pathways in our body and it is highly toxic what liver do it uh, broken it broken down Uh, the hydrogen peroxide into hydrogen and oxygen by an enzyme which is called as catalase and it is present in high concentration in the cells of liver then it also plays a important role in formation of cholesterol cholesterol is synthesized in liver and the excess is removed in bile the excess amount of cholesterol in gall bladder may result in formation of gall stone which uh, may lead to jaundice thermoregulation due to the efficient blood supply in uh, liver and its large size and high metabolism it can play important role in maintaining the body temperature 
it also stores vitamins like uh, vitamin a vitamin b and vitamin d so that is all now this is your home task from this lecture and from the previous one as well uh, there are five questions number one what is homeostasis this is a short question what are the excretory products and their correlation with habitat of animals what is excretion how does it occur in hydra planaria earthworm and cockroach this is a long question how does osmoregulation takes place in terrestrial animals then discuss the homeostatic functions of liver thank you